an interesting subject matter, uh, a new network for new ways of working. Um, I, I suppose just a bit of background about uh, myself. Uh, I've been 25 years in telecoms and networking um, and, and involved in MPLS when it, it started 15 years ago. And I have to say, I, I've been waiting for the industry to change because I felt, um, that particularly the fact when when it's speed to site or getting a site live, you know, I used to say <clears throat> when I was uh, in, in the telco world and um, I, I used to say back 20 years ago, it was 12 weeks to deliver a site. And uh, I, I said uh, just before I left a certain telco about three years ago, uh, it's still 12 weeks. And a project manager said, no, Gavin, it's it's 14 weeks, not not 12 weeks. And I suppose when the rest of the key sectors have reinvented themselves, particularly the airline industry, um, why hasn't uh, particularly the wide area network reinvented itself? But I think what you're about to see today and also uh, have the pleasure of Al, who's the Vice President of Product and Strategic Alliance, live from Tel Aviv on, on the call. And we're going to finish with a, a an interview session. And, and I hope he brings or I know he will bring to light uh, real life examples of, of networking and how Cato is changing the industry. So um, I'll start off just to uh, talk about some of the, um, the, 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 the the agenda items we're going to talk about today. And uh, they will be. I can on to my next slide. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, oh it's going to. OK, so um, the alternative to legacy MPLS wide area networks. So look, MPLS, as a customer said to me a few months ago, has served the industry really well. It's it's done a brilliant job, MPLS, over the last 15 years. Um, there's mission critical uh, networks, banks, uh, hospitals and so on using MPLS and they brought in class of service. So it's done, done us really well. And I suppose uh, about three years ago, along came SD-WAN. And then a bit like the joke about buses coming along together, along came SASE. And we're going to talk a little bit about SASE and uh, within the SASE offering that Ergo and Cato offer, SD-WAN is part of that. Uh, we'll do an introduction to Cato. And then obviously internet is now the key connectivity method and enhanced internet. Uh, for the example, in Ireland, we all know AIR are building fibre to the home. CSIRO is out there and National Broadband Ireland. So you can now start getting one gig connections with proper business SLAs for, you know, between a thousand and two thousand euros a year. And that's a real game changer instead of paying 10,000 euro for expensive 10 meg or 100 meg fiber connections into MPLS. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about SASE, uh, why SASE and the challenges it addresses for your business. And then what is the Ergo Cato managed service and a little bit about our network team and then where to start the journey and then to bring all this alive, the interview with Al, uh, as I said, who's live from Tel Aviv. Um, so I recently did, um, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I recently did a sales presentation course. And uh, this is the cultural part of the presentation, maybe to, to capture your intention, attention, should I say. So um, I, I guess in this uh, sales presentation course, uh, the lady taught us, shock the audience with something completely strange and out of the norm uh, to begin with, to, to grab their attention. So what 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 is this about this particular slide? I'm going to call it the uh, art and cultural section of the presentation. So uh, I also paint, but it's not really about me painting. But a, a friend of mine asked me would I do a painting. He didn't want a portrait, but all the important things in his life. So a, an orange racer, his mum bought him and his apartment kind of when he got his first apartment and he worked for Ericsson and that's the view out the window to Clontarf and there's a bus going by with Ericsson and then the, the docks in the background. Um, but it was only when I finished this painting, so let's just say this was circa 1992, that I, I, I thought of the, the, the stereo system with the, the LP and the cassette deck and the equalizer, the television, the VCR for watching movies, and even the, 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 the 
home telephone uh, and so on. Uh, and I was just thinking, if you had said to that person in 1992, do you know there'll be a device where you can watch any movie you want, listen to any album you want, and watch TV and reruns of The Late Late Show or whatever you want to watch uh, on a single device, they, they would have said, you're mad. But I, I suppose, what's the connection with Sassy? Well, well, really, it's it's the it's the consolidation of all the stuff uh, we talk about all the time in the in the IT world of networks and security coming together. And um, you know, when the, the the picture up the top is really you have MPLS and then you have SD WAN and you have your remote user and you have your global branch and you've got your public cloud connecting into AWS and Azure and so on. You have your network security, your cloud security, your global backbone, um, and and um, all these things are they're running around and they're all they're all headaches, and 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 the slide below that is Gardner's view of the world, and and I I was struggling a bit, you know, trying to understand Sassy, but the the picture below which sometimes reminds me of a, a, a blender that you'd make in the morning and you throw in your fruit and your veg and whatever you want. But I suppose on the left-hand side, I'm a network person. I get networks. So SD-WAN, carriers, quas, um, 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 all the elements that make up SD-WAN. And I suppose the three things that SD-WAN would bring anytime someone asked me a question was, cheaper access using enhanced internet and um, the ability to have a portal where you can control make changes uh, put applications into different quads categories and so on and um uh, just the, the, the coming together of all the network elements but i guess what sassy brings is all the security elements so whether that's casb firewall as a service secure web gateway um intrusion detection and so on and I saw a similar uh, a similar diagram from a, from a, a different SD WAN vendor only last week. It was actually a, a hero of mine was presenting it. And on the left hand side, they had all the network elements uh, as uh, you'd expect. And then on the right hand side, they had third party security vendors. So this person was saying we can create APIs into um, all the different security vendors, be it Zscaler or, 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 or Palo Alto or Prisma or whatever the case. And, you know, that, that's great. But I suppose what Cato is doing and what Gardner is saying is the consolidation of all of that into one. So there's no APIs and there's no third parties and there's no, well, I've got my SD-WAN here and then I have to get my uh, 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 security um, uh, practices and then get my staff up to speed on all the different elements and so on. So, um, you know, as, as Gardner, who, who, who came up with SASE, they said the most notable vendor um, from a software architecture perspective out there today is Cato. And we've uh, they have a very strong unified software architecture. And, you know, when you get endorsed by Gardner, the people who come up with this and the fact it brings everything together, <laughs> it, it, it really starts to talk, to talk about that thing I said at the start, to change this industry and the, the, the industry we've been, the, the change we've been waiting for, for a long time. So um, a, a, an important slide to kind of bring it all together. Um, you know, they talk about consolidation. It's not just Gardner, IDC are saying the same thing. So you've got all these security players and, and network players. And I suppose the real key here is, you know, is a, a lot of these, point solutions you your your staff have to become um do the exams and become proficient in all these things with, with cato it's all under um it's all under one one badge and it's all under one solution they built the backbone and i'm sure ai will talk about it that at that a little bit more um and it's really about reducing the complexity uh, uh, and cost the the cost on the connectivity side so as i said before instead of paying for expensive private circuits into mpls but there's also um on the resource time and uh, as i say you it's all under one badge with cato but also what customers are saying to me lately is we want to manage service 
and that's where where Ergo comes in. So we are a managed service provider. We're the biggest privately owned uh, IT managed service provider in Ireland, and and that's the ring we we provide around that, and it just helps to reduce the the, the pain points. So. Again, you know, I was at a table recently and uh, they came over and said, what? and these were, you know, industry experts and said, you know, what, what do you think is sassy? And everyone said, we're confused what it is. So so just to go over it one more time, and particularly in the Cato offering, it's SD-WAN, so it's your software-defined WAN. Uh, Cato have 75 pops around the world. Um, and, and, and by the way, you know, moving from traditional telcos is a really big decision for companies. So it doesn't have to be big bang. So if if you have a site in China or you want to test this with a site in Vilnius or whatever it is, we'll take that and we'll prove ourselves. And then from there, so whether you want a pilot or whether you want a, a, a particular site, we're, we're happy to do that. But it's a global uh, global backbone offer an SD-WAN. Um, Cato, I think, have three pops in China. So China can be a difficult place for, for some companies, but um, we, we'd be happy to uh, to do that. Um, the next is the security stack. And, you know, the maybe I uh, might talk a, a bit about it later on, but the people behind Cato came from the security in, I, I, industry um, with Imperva and so on. So the security stack comes with that. And, um, and, and I suppose... Uh, the 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 Cato backbone is built in a lot of cases in Equinox pops, which are the same pops that uh, AWS and Azure. So when you want public cloud interconnects, and in the telco world, it's direct connect and express route, and oh, we have to do this, and it's going to take weeks. In, in the case of Cato, because the cloud players are in the same data centers, the the AWS or the Azure become a site effectively on the network. And in a lot of cases, it's a LAN connection between the Cato rack and the uh, Azure rack. So it's it's ideal for cloud. And again, you know, to, to test us, it might be a case of, um, you know, let's talk about a particular use case. I don't want to move my entire network to Ergo, but I might test you and we, we'll do a little project, be it remote access, cloud connectivity, or a site in an obscure area. Uh, mobile, and speaking of, 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 of remote access, really good story around that, uh, zero trust networking. It's the ability that there's a Cato client on your laptop and that laptop cannot do anything. So you have choices, by the way, it can connect via the Cato client and therefore you control exactly any time that that laptop connects or mobile device it's it's true that and it, it, you you control what that device can do equally there's a clientless option as well for for third party consultants that if you want to give them um the ability to get into certain parts of your networks so look i i, I again in the telco world i've been involved in remote access but this is this is a different level of remote access and and they don't call it remote access they call it um secured uh, perimeter or they call it zero trust networking and we might talk about that as a use case uh, later on and then uh, the management and that that's really where i'm going to show you some screenshots from portals but um des curley is the head of networking in uh, cato and uh, he has a team of 15 highly qualified engineers but it was des who who got ergo in to Cato um, over the last three years. And it's really the management portal. I mean, the amount of the amount you can do and the ease of use of this portal, uh, which I'll, I'll show you in a while. So when you bring all those those points together, that's the Cato Sassy Cloud. And um, I'll come to what Ergo bring to the picture because the book stops with us. We provide we provide everything, including the last mile internet. So if we just look at Cato's backbone, um, they they are the first to build a global backbone that isn't a telco. Um, so if we take the left hand side, that could be a typical branch in Ireland where you have two or you can have three internet connections and there's a Cato socket. 
which is the, the CPE. I suppose there's a couple of things that are unique about the Cato socket. One is uh, there's no lead time issues. So if you want to side up and running uh, within three weeks, uh, we can help with that. And um, the second thing is there's no cost for it. There's no upfront cost. It's built into the operational uh, expenditure over three years or five years or, or whatever you cho choose it for. You plug your two internet connections into that, and then it connects to the nearest pop. Uh, there's two pops in Dublin, but should those two pops fail, uh, you would be rerouted automatically to the nearest pop. That could be Manchester or, or, or London. Or if you say, well, actually, no, I have to keep my traffic in the EU and the UK is no longer EU, we can force it that it goes to Brussels or Amsterdam. Um, then you can have your, your your data center connected, you can have your remote users connected, and then you can have your um, public cloud uh, connected, as I say, like a site. And then within the core, you turn on and turn off what services you want. So what we're seeing in the market is customers are coming to us for uh, SD-WAN, and, and that's no problem. And then we're going back to say there are other features, security features, that you're going to get anyway. Whether whether you want them or not, they're they're there. And then what we're seeing is customers go, okay, you know what? I might try try the firewall. We were talking to um, one one customer said, I I don't really need firewalls. Um, but 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 when we pointed out they did have some guest Wi-Fi that was wide open, and we said, well, why don't we put it on that? And they said, yeah, actually, you know, I didn't think of that. So that's where uh, when when you have this stuff, you you can say, or you can test the intrusion detection or the CASB or, or whatever. So it, it's all in there. And then you have that management portal uh, that I'm going to show you now in a minute that uh, that, that 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 gives you granularity both for monitoring what's going on, my applications and so on. There are certain customers that have seen the portal and said, this is so easy to use, why would I want to manage service? So you don't have to buy a managed service. Similarly, you don't have to buy internet from us, or in some cases you might buy one internet connection from us and the other one you might have already. So you can bring your own internet. And the other thing that's very unusual uh, in our offering is we can give you read write access. So normally the, the, the managed service provider said, no, no, we'll do read write access. You can have read access. But Ergo have made a decision that you can have a read write access to make changes if you want. Obviously, if you make a change and that causes an issue um, and you open up a ticket with Ergo, that may lead to a delay because we're going to have to um, undo the change you made if it was causing an issue. But read write access, if that's something that's important to you, is is something that uh, we can do. Um, so, OK, that's the uh, backbone. And then, so what does Ergo bring to the picture? Well, if we've got the SASE core, which is the Cato backbone, which is both SD-WAN and SASE with all its different features, uh, the next layer out of that is your underlay or your internet. So uh, we, we've many partners, Magnet Plus being one of them, and they can provide internet uh, in most countries in, in, in the world. Um, microwave, Air, Enet, uh, Virgin, whatever the case is. And, and in the old world, what happened is if you had a new internet provider, you had to build an interconnect into the MPLS network. We just need internet. So if you're in Sri Lanka and you have internet, but you need all of the other features such as SD-WAN and SASE, we can, sit, we can configure the socket, send it out to Sri Lanka, we can install it if need be, but all of a sudden your site's up and running. So it's, the speed to site is really important. Uh, in my telco world, I had a customer construction, used to build stadiums around the world, and they'd say, why am I paying 30,000 euro for an MPLS connection in Sweden when the contractor beside me has a one gig internet connection for a thousand euros a month? So that's where we can put the Cato on the end of that, or we can provide internet. So, so that's the underlay part. And then I guess the blue line around that is really the managed service. So that's the classic ergo managed service that we will look after everything. We, we do the monitoring, we do the configuration changes. You get up to 75 configura configuration changes uh, a year and uh, we, we'll do whatever you want. If you have a new application and you say I wanted to put it into class of service two, um, we, we will do that either at a particular site or even at a particular user level. 
So the, the, the ability to do all of these features. We also do LAN as a service through Aruba, Cisco, Meraki and Fortinet, but today is not about that. And uh, obviously if the remote users. So just a couple of things. It's more of a platform, not so much a product. And think of it as a managed smart pipe. Um, as I say, it's, it's security and networking together. We can set you up in a pilot within weeks. Uh, there's no hardware issues on the lead times. You can have Monday to Friday, or you can have 24 by seven. And we do all the changes. And, and um, as I say, you can bring your own internet uh, with you. Okay, so the portal. Um, th this is the bit that got me. Uh, I've seen portals before. And uh, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm well aware of SD-WAN for the last uh, five years. But I, I suppose the center portal is, you know, and I, I always, you know, I always love drawing pictures of a customer's network. But but with this, whether you add a device, a laptop, a site, a data center or a cloud, it will appear as a connection and it will show the status of that connection. So that's your kind of go to screen. That's my network. That's all my sites. There are my users connected and it will tell me which are active and, and, and which aren't and, and, and so on. Then I can drill down in the site and I can see, well, what's going on in that site at an application level. I can put rules to say, you know what, I want to allow YouTube and Netflix, but I'm going to clock it back to 5% of the total capacity of the port. Um, if someone says, you know, what, I, I had a problem. I was on a video call last Friday, there's six months of data. So you can click on the last Friday. Click, click on the site, click on the last Friday, see what application it was, click on the time and troubleshoot it from there. Or, or I, I say you can, but if it's a managed service, we can. Um, so we will do the, 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 the self provisioning, the resilience, the cloud connectivity, all the user provisioning, the authentication, or you can do it. Um, one customer uh, we, we went on a call with recently and they wanted to connect to Azure and uh, the call was to connect to Azure. We got on the call and the customer said, I've done it. Um, and th this was the same customer who said, I don't need a managed service. This this portal is so, so easy to use. Um, if you want a session on the portal or if you want a pilot, um, just reach out to me. I think I've sent most of you, 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 you an email to thank you for co coming on the call. Um, but but uh, if if you want a um, a pilot or a session on the portal, be delighted to do that. Okay, so moving on. Um, so okay, I guess we're at the uh, discussion point. So Al, if you go off mute, uh, I have put a few. Mm -hmm. Pre-canned questions, but I suppose they're questions. Um, I, I um, so so I suppose moving from a telco uh, to a managed service uh, provider such as Ergo uh, for networks and SASE, it's a big deal. Uh, wh what kind of trends are you seeing of moving from the telco world to the managed service provider world? So first of all, it's great to be here and thank you very much for uh, inviting and hosting me. Um, it is a clear trend. I think that um, many of the enterprises in, in all over the world are kind of fed up with the telcos who kind of held them prisoners because of the private circuits business. You had to buy MPLAs. You could only buy it from the telco or through a reseller of the telco and the telco would manage everything as a black box. Sometimes they did a good job. In the majority of cases, they didn't which kind of what drove the industry to seek for an alternative solution. So yes, we're definitely seeing this all over where there is a migration from telco managed services to MSPs like Ergo. Um, and I think, you know, you were speaking earlier about how open Ergo is. You're saying, look, you can manage the network yourself. We can co-manage it with you. Whatever works for you works for us. To me, that indicates a lot of confidence as an MSP. First of all, it's a lot of um, respect towards your customers who are on this uh, webinar with us, that they are capable and they have the skills. We're not um, you know, underestimating what customers can do by themselves, but everybody's under stress of time and load and resources. And this is where MSPs can be of a lot of value. So I think about it in a way that, you know, it's a value as a service kind of offering. And when you sell value, 
as an MSP, which telcos didn't sell before. And you do it openly. You give your customers a read-write permission to the platform alongside with you. That forces both the technology vendor like Cato and the MSP like yourselves to prove that we have value. And that forces us to always be on our toes and give a very, very, very good service to our shared customers. And this is something that telcos didn't have, you know, that um, that gun to their heads until now because they own the MPLS business so rigidly. And now this has changed and everything is becoming more democratic and the customers are getting more for their bucks. And I think this is the, the main factor that drives yeah. this change. And can I ask, it's not one of the questions listed there, but um, have any telcos signed up? Uh, you don't have to say who, but uh, of selling Cato, or do they see you as as uh, their nemesis? So um, most of, well, if you'd asked me that two years ago, I would say that they all see us as their nemesis. Um, but I think it's now a proven fact in the industry worldwide that everybody's going towards SASE. And SASE, to a large extent, is going to bite even more aggressively into MPLS business than SD1 did until now. And the telcos are coming around. So we have uh, at least two big public partnerships that I can speak about. KDDI, which is one of the largest telcos in Japan, but we also partner with their MSP arm worldwide. And Windstream, in, which is the third largest telcos in North America. Effectively, they chose us because this has become their differentiation against mm -hmm. the other telcos who are late to the SASE revolution, maybe if yeah. you can call it this way. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they are coming around. Very good. And are customers surprised? Because what we're seeing is tenders come out, RFPs come out for SD-WAN. And then as we're replying, we can't help but talk about SASE and all the different things. And there's, they're seen in the response SASE security elements included as part of the, the, the proposition. So um, do you think customers are surprised at, at this? Are you seeing that trend where it's SD-WAN and then, oh, oh my God, you have all this stuff as well? There is a kind of a shift in, in the customer's reaction. Initially, uh, when customers would see a SASE offering like Cato, they would say, that's very nice, but I'm only asking about SD-1. So let's let's focus on what I'm asking about. This is changing, and even Gartner is saying now that I think in two years' time, 50% of customers who would buy SD-1 would buy it from a single vendor SASE, because I think everybody understands that once you go SD-1 and you introduce internet everywhere, you also need to care about the security. You can't continue backhauling everything to the data center. You need to care about remote users. Your enterprise becomes more open to the internet. And then you have to address the security parts as well as other projects like cloud migration. So the way um, this, this kind of change in how enterprises think today is that usually they would go and buy SD-1 as a tactical project. I need to get off MPLS or I need more bandwidth. I'll buy SD-1 and that will deliver me. That was solving a point problem with a point solution. A SASE is a strategy. It's not only a technology, it's a strategy and a framework, which as you said earlier, can be executed over a period of time. It can be a year, it can be multiple years. And during that journey, that SASE strategy is executed and every time you replace one point solution with a component of the SASE platform, eventually getting everything into one cohesive platform. So customers today are much more aware and you know educated and strategically thinking about the relations between SD1 and SASE. But again, it's a relatively young technology, four years since Gartner uh, defined it. Cato has existed for eight years now. This is our eighth birthday this month. So um, yeah, it, it's still new, not as not as yeah. old and mature as SD1. Gotcha, gotcha. And I suppose the it comes down to money at the end of the day. So you know, what are the bottom line metrics and return on investment value Cato SASE delivers uh, that you're seeing? So. Uh, let, let me break my answers my answer into two parts. One is the quantifiable benefits and the other one is the unquantifiable benefits because it's part of what you get when you go on with SASE and with a partner like Ergo. On the quantifiable side, the dollar value or the euro value, um, 
the the more capabilities you move into the SASE cloud, the more cost saving you achieve. So if you compare SD1 from SASE with SD1 from another vendor, they would usually be in par. Or if you move from MPLS to SD1, you'll get the same kind of ratio of getting more bandwidth for the same amount of dollar. There won't be anything groundbreaking there, but as you start turning on more security capabilities that replace your firewalls and replace your WAN optimization and replace your global connectivity circuits and you replace your remote access servers, then you start seeing a lot of cost saving. This is on the quantifiable side. On the unquantifiable side, because everything is one platform, and there is no maintenance work you know, to patch and update appliances and schedule maintenance windows and worry about keeping the lights on, the teams that are working on the platform, as well as partners like Ergo, are more focused on business outcomes than on maintenance. And that means that first of all, the employees in both the partners and the, the end customers are feeling that the work is more directly attached to business success and revenue because they're not maintaining the infrastructure but configuring it to support business success. And at the same time, the business can move faster. You said earlier in your presentation, we can spin up a site on the other side of the world in three weeks. Think about what it means to the company leadership that they come to the IT team and they say, look, we're going to buy a company in Singapore. We need them connected in two weeks. And you can say, okay, just like that. Instead of, oh no, this is a six months project. This is huge. Th there is an example that I like to give, and I'm sorry that my answer is a little bit long. No, no, perfect. Um, th there's an example that I like to give um, from the Microsoft Exchange world. Before Office 365, everybody had their own on-premise exchange server. You would have to buy a server from a company, buy the operating system, buy the exchange application. You would worry about memory and storage and backup and replication and UPS, many things. And if you are a 2,500 employees company and you just acquired a 1,500 employee company that has a newer version of exchange, that would be a very confusing IT project. Which exchange version am I going to align to? What does it mean in terms of licenses I need to buy and hardware I need to buy? And how do I deploy it? And with Office 365, moving from a 2,500 to 4,000 is a credit card transaction. It's that simple. Mm. This is the level of revolution that SASE brings to enterprises. So always keep that in mind. Everything becomes almost as simple as a credit card transaction with very few configuration work that usually customers vote for, you know, opt for uh, MSPs like Ergo to help them with. But again, not at the expense of their control. You're not, when you're going to support customers in building their network and migrating to SASE, they would still have the visibility. They would still have the access. They won't feel like control has been taken from them in the attempt to become more efficient and more robust. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, no, it, it sure is a revolution. And, you know, they say you can't t teach old dogs new tricks, but my my tail is wagging and I'm learning all these tricks and uh, the, 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 the future is very exciting. So I suppose typical migration process, and I, I know we've kind of covered this a little bit, you know, big bang or project led. Um, it could be MPLS replacement, firewall replacement, remote access, single or multi-cloud migration. Um, our, our use case challenges. What are you typically seeing um, in, in Cato around the world? Big bang or, or, or use case and um, any interesting stories there? So um, it, it used to be, so it's, it's almost never a big bang. We had some cases of big bang customers that did everything overnight. Uh, for example, if it's a divesture from a big company, the new company get the autonomy to choose how they are building their new network, then they can start from a clean slate and they can go SASE all in from day one. But usually it's a migration from an existing infrastructure. And in those cases, I simply reference to the Gartner recommendation of find the first project you can do to get on the SASE journey and continue from there. Um, it can be the network, it can be security, it can be remote access, it can be hybrid or multi-cloud. Everything is valid. It can start as 
low as two sites that you need to connect or 50 sites or an MA. There are always IT projects that you can leverage to start the SASE journey. Statistically, today we see this. Um, well, the, the initiation of the project comes either a third, about a third is coming from remote access project, letting go of legacy VPN and moving on to ZTNA, both for security and scalability for uh, you know the new hybrid world that everybody's uh, operating under now. Another third is a network refresh, which is MPLS replacement most dominantly. And another third is security refresh, consolidating security capabilities into one cloud security service, and getting rid of legacy security appliances. However, the fact that those are the drivers for a SASE conversation doesn't mean that the project scope ends there. Because sometimes, and it even happens very often, once you go into the detailed discussion about moving into a SASE platform, you'll see that either with the same spend or with a slight additional investment, you can move security and network to SASE from the get-go or during the first three months. And even if you spend a little more than you anticipated, the value that you get, the improved security risk posture, the better visibility and control, the better agility, it's worth that additional spend. And you either do it now, you do it in one month or in one year or two when the security or the network refresh cycle is coming. It's really individual. But I think that as, as enterprises learn more about the values that they can get from SASE, it opens a whole new world of, of conversations of what it can do for me, what's what's in it for me, and what values will I get yeah. if I accelerate the process beyond the you know the natural uh, refresh cycles that I have. Yeah, and last question. I I felt like I did a bad job explaining the remote access piece or zero trust networking, and I started off. <clears throat> My my days in telecoms with, uh, sad to say, dial up remote access from <laughs> 125 countries with uh, with BT years ago. But I loved remote access, and I suppose remote access is even more important now as none of us go into the office. Is, is there a few nuances? And I'll I'll start off with one, and then just on on the Cato Zero Trust Networking or SDP. One customer came to us and said, "Look." We have sites in Cyprus, South Africa, and Spain. It's really important our people have Spanish IP addresses, South African IP addresses. So when we log on, we're not co coming, A, we're not tromboning through Dublin, and B, we're, we're seeing that we can access local resources. Or in the UK, BBC Player is a very emotive uh, thing, and watch watch, watch, yeah. your, watch the premiership. But, but what else? On, on the remote access, because you can fob it off as, ah, yeah, remote access. There's, there's a hundred ways of doing that, but there are some unique things with uh, Cato. So um, it, it's a very good point. I don't actually, I think you did a good job explaining remote access, but yeah. we can we can zoom in further. So first of all, let's clear the acronyms. There is ZTNA, which is Zero <laughs> Trust Network Access. This was an acronym coined by Forrester. And then there is SDP, which is Software Defined Perimeter, which was the acronym coined by Gartner. In this specific case, Forrester won, and ZTNA <laughs> is picking up more popularly, but they speak about the exact same thing. And this is that remote users should be granted access to the resources that they need to get to on a list privileges and zero trust principle. So first, I don't give you access to anything. I identify you. And only if you passed all my identification and authorization requirements, then I would give you a very granular access only to what you need to get to have access to. So it's no longer like a VPN server that gives you access to an entire subnet or a network based on a username and password, which is very weak, or sometimes a basic multi-factor authentication. Now we're looking about which device you're connecting from. It's a bring your own device or a corporate device. Which operating system does it has an updated patch and anti-malware is there's a full disk encryption how you authenticated yourself from where you authenticated there are so many parameters that we check to make sure that the device the user account none of them is compromised and even after we did all these checks you won't get access to a subnet or a network but to a specific application and it can even be limited to a specific time of day so that's on the access control and how that allows us allows enterprises to reduce their uh, risk exposure the other part of VPN, and that was or VPN replacement with ZTNA, 
is the user experience. You mentioned tromboning. One of the most common things people say about VPN is, when I work in the office, everything works great. When I go home and I tell my VPN client and connect, everything stops working. It's slow, it's, you know, it's frustrating, it doesn't move, I'm not productive. How do you overcome this? And the way that Kato solves this is that we've made remote users, we like to call them first class citizens on the network. Because we have this huge cloud of pops, every remote user would connect to the, automatically to the nearest Kato pop to where they are at any given moment. And they would get all the services, all the security and the optimization capabilities from that pop. So they actually have the exact same network and security when they work from remote as they have when they work from the office. And the policies follow the user identity instead of putting pulling the user identity traffic or tromboning it into a central inspection and enforcement point. So users who are you know, um, connected in Spain would get into the Spain pop and would go to the internet from the Spain pop, from the Spanish pop, sorry, and would get localized content. And either in the users in the UK would get localized content and users in Japan would get localized content because we don't backhaul or trombone the traffic anymore. So there's no more issues with localization, no more issues with performance and productivity, and it doesn't come at the expense of a reduced security posture, but the opposite. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, well, Al, thanks, thanks a million for those insights. And I'm just going to summarise some of the key points we talked about today. So, I have no doubt Cato is going to be a huge success. Every time I I I I, I connect, I I'm constantly getting updated with uh, new certifications and and endorsements that Cato are getting. So the core is 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 fantastic. The internet, whether Ergo provides it and bills you for it and so on, or you bring your own internet, you know, again, that's new and really flexible. And then you have the Ergo managed service around that. So I really think um, between us all, although, you know, as customers say, Gavin, I, I hear Cato and I hear it, the book stops with Ergo. We manage everything if that's what you want. So I really think it's an exciting uh, offering. And I also think the market in Ireland is wide open for change um, because as you, you use the word, they've been held hostage for um, the, the, the last few years with MPLS providers and so 